Well, yesterday we started talking about uh, verse 1 of uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. And in the beginning, he says, therefore, based upon, in other words, what God has done in our life and who we are in Christ, we need to rid ourselves of certain things. And when we read the word rid ourselves, we often think about forbid ourselves. And this is the concept that many of us have about being a Christian, that uh, we don't really know so much about the shouts as we know about the thou shalt nots. Uh, Garrison Keeler once said that he didn't go learn to tie knots in Boy Scouts. He went to Luther League and he learned the shout knots. And we many times think that the Christian life is this life of restrictions. We're forbidden to do this. We're forbidden to do that. And we find ourselves struggling because the more we focus on the thing that we're not supposed to do, oftentimes the more attractive that thing becomes, at least until the snake bites you and then he's no longer attractive. But the simple fact is, the really way that we rid ourselves is simply by not only putting off the old man, but putting on the new man is the way that Paul put it. That when I begin to decide, you know, instead of following my passions or my own thought life, my own best ideas, if you will, I'm going to choose to follow Christ. I'm going to seek to pursue Him and do those things that will help me know Him better. And so for me, that was natural just to begin reading the Bible. Um, I got to admit, I've read one Christian book in the first five years I was saved. Um, and for a variety of reasons, not because I had anything against Christian books, but I was focused on reading the Bible and understanding it and trying to get, to make sense out of that. And, you know, since then, I've, I've read hundreds of books. But the whole point is that nothing comes close to the Bible. Someone once pointed out to me early on, they said, you know, uh, when you read most books, even Christian books, you have to kind of read them with a rake. You got to go through them and pick the bones out, you know, because uh, nobody gets it completely right. Uh, even my books, you know. But the whole point is that when you read the Bible, you don't have to do that. You know it's the Word of God. And if there's something that you don't quite understand, you have to begin with the understanding that you're the one who needs to be instructed. You shouldn't start instructing the Bible. Most heresy develops when people think that they're going to improve on the Bible. Most major false religions that have come out of Christianity, we call them pseudo-Christianity or heterodox Christianity, are based upon people who are trying to improve on the biblical text. And instead of reading, uh, drawing out of the text, they're reading into the text their own prejudices, their own biases, and sometimes their own ambitions. And that's why he said, you know, we need to begin by not just forbidding ourselves to do certain things, but rather more healthily focusing on the thing that we can. So how do we get ourselves to rid ourselves of certain things that aren't good? Well, it's by really bringing our lives into agreement with God's Word. For example, he said we need to rid ourselves of all malice. Malice is interesting because malice is the last step in uh, resentment. In other words, most of us find, get ourselves in trouble because we resent something. And resentment is this idea that somebody or something has happened to me or done to me that isn't right, isn't fair, and I look at the source of that problem, as I perceive it, and I begin to resent them. How dare you speak to me that way? How dare you treat me that way? How dare you do that to me? And on and on we go. And those resentments uh, need to be really captured and repented of early on. Because we don't have some special dispensation from God that frees us from having to deal with the difficulties of life or even the difficulties of relationships. You see, most marriages begin to fall apart when one or both of the parties in the marriage begin to hold on to resentments. And those resentments grow into what he says next is bitterness. And that's why the writer of Hebrews said, don't allow bitterness to develop a root system in your life. And the reason bitterness develops is because we start by being resentful. We resent what somebody did, the way they talked, the way they treated us, the way they're treating us at that moment, or whatever it is, their, their lack of love and affection and care and approval and so forth and so on. And we take that personally. How dare they do that to me? Now, rarely do we recognize that that's kind of pride. It's like, you know, you sit back and say, don't you know who I am? And the answer often is, yeah, I do, but so what? We have this idea that we are entitled to special relationship. And it always comes with the word, but. We say, well, I know I should uh, be resentful, but. Well, I know I, I should forgive them, but. 
and we put that in there, that contraction in there, and suddenly we forget what we're not supposed to do or what we're supposed to do. I know I'm supposed to love this person, but... And that, that just begins to take us down this road into eventually into bitterness. Because what happens is resentment is like a seed that's planted in the ground, planted in the garden of your heart. And what you do is you let it grow. And when it grows, it begins to grow up. The roots spread out and have other things that sprout up around it. And those things that come up out of the ground of your soul, whole soul is called bitterness. And bitterness is this, this really grinding thing on the inside of it. The, the word comes from the idea of putting something in your mouth, uh, some noxious thing that just you can't, you want to spit it out, but you can't get the taste out of your mouth. And suddenly you find yourself seeing that person or hearing their name or whatever it is, and you begin to find this anger and resentment growing up inside of you. And the problem is, if it just stayed on the inside of you, there would be no problem. But what it does is it metastasizes the root of bitterness, the tree of bitterness, the, the, the toxic or the poisonous tree eventually bears fruit, and that fruit is called malice. Malice is where we get our word maliciousness. And what it means is that I'm going to give expression physically, verbally, outwardly, I'm going to give expression to the bitterness that I've developed because of something I resented in you. So the best way to deal with the issue of malice is to begin by recognizing resentment the moment it comes into your heart. I mean, how often does a husband or wife make a remark or a comment and it just offends the other person? And they just sit there and they think about it and they think about it and they think about it and they may never say anything, but they're just letting the seed sit there in the soil of their soul. And if they don't look at that and say, you know, God, forgive me for, for holding on to that resentment. Forgive me for being embittered over that. Because if they don't, it will grow up and eventually it will come out in an action. I believe that many times that divorce is ultimately the, the consequence of an act of maliciousness. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't innocent parties in, in divorces. There often are. But in, in the end of the day, divorce is the ultimate expression of, I'm going to get even with you. I'm going to make you punish. I'm going to make you pay. And it's, it's acting out on a resentment that has become bitterness. And bitterness now has become expressed by doing something like, I'm going to divorce you. And I think what's tragic to me, I've seen it happen so many times. There is no more greater devastation to the financial welfare and the health and safety of families and children in particular than the act of divorce. And again, I know that there are some of you who have gone through that and there was nothing you could do about it, or if it was, you recognize how wrong it was for you to do it. I don't mean to heap on the guilt, but basically I see many families that have become impoverished because of things like divorce. It's amazing the amount of money that is wasted funding lawyers and, and the legal system. Sometimes I wonder if lawyers like the system, there's almost a collusion between them and the courts to extract as much money as they possibly can by dragging out the process on and on and on, because unfortunately our legal system is increasingly becoming something that's based upon how much money you have or how willing a lawyer is to do this on a contingency based upon some free future payoff. It leads to a corruption of the system, but in the end, who are the ones that are really victimized? Well, the people who allowed resentment to grow in their hearts, they became bitter to the point where they had to do something to express their bitterness, and that became a malicious act. Whether it becomes a physical striking of somebody or walking out of a job or walking out of a church or walking out of a marriage, I'll show them and I'll do this and, you, you know, all this kind of childishness, can okay, I put it that way, that in the end, what happens is that you're the one who will pay the price for that. Um, and that's a tragedy. So save yourself a lot of pain. When you recognize a seed of resentment in your heart, then just bring it before the, the cross of Christ. Say, Lord, I'm nursing this resentment right now. It's creating a, a, a cynicism right inside of me right now, a, 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 a skepticism towards about this other person. Really, uh, I just am wrestling with this feeling inside. Just say, Lord, forgive me and free me from this and take it from my heart. That's how you rid yourself of it. You're taking it and giving it to him. And when you hold it up, he'll take it away. 
I know you may have to do it over and over again, but if you hold it up in prayer, he will take it away and he'll set you free and save you from the consequences of the bitter fruit of malice. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll continue tomorrow.